Paul, thank you very much for doing this interview. I really appreciate it. Let, let me feel your hand for a second. Uh, uh, look, dry and warm. <laughs> you're, you're, you're so calm. I expected this of you. You know what? And this is a lead into uh, what I want to talk about. Uh, but first of all, just to uh, set the stage, Paul's a very uh, successful, if not brilliant, I don't use that word often, salesman and a uh, dedicated family man. Now, the issue, the specific issue that I wanted to talk to you about was the concept of detachment. This is a very important clinical issue as it applies to what we're doing here with social anxiety. I'm defining detachment as disconnecting the mind from issues, thoughts, feelings, physiology. Some people know the term dissociation versus detachment. Could you please describe when you were aware of your propensity to start doing this? Um, it goes way back to when I was a kid. Uh, I'll say maybe 10, 11 years old. I was, uh, my family was fairly normal from the outside, but my mother was always yelling, always, uh, you know, questioning how you did things, why you did things. And there was a lot of conflict between her and my dad. And um, what would happen is, you know, since there was always conflict, you also never knew where you stood. You never knew if you came home from school, if you're gonna be in trouble, if your thing was gonna be okay. So what you would do is you would kind of retreat into your own little world. I would listen to what was going on and then I would put it out of my head by getting involved in other things, either playing, watching TV. You know, back then everyone had Hot Wheels cars, they would play with them all the time. Uh, but it was always in the mix where it was also like, like another world that you were in, like another universe almost. So when there was this conflict going on, if I use the word back then as a kid, you became hypervigilant. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, definitely. I would always be, you know, even to this day, you know, I'm always looking for signals. But back then, you know, when you would come home from school or come home from an event, like say baseball or basketball or, or even Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts, you never knew it was going to greet you when you went in the house. So you were always looking for those signals. And it started then, and then it's carried through. You know, obviously now it helps me in my business now, because I'm always looking for signals from people, uh, which is helpful in a sales process or in any type of business situation. But that's when it started.